Okay, continuing the book to uh, put God's book that he dictated to me in this day of the Lord. That is here. This is the day of the Lord. There ain't any question about it. And uh, primarily because of Jeremiah 31. Takes you to Malachi 3, and that's where God declares the day of the Lord. He is here. Um, he, he says in, in verse 1 of Malachi 3, I'm, <clears throat> uh, I'm sending my messenger before me to clear the way, and I shall return to my temple suddenly. And the angel of the covenant that you desire is already on the way. The angel of the covenant that you desire. That's the covenant of Jeremiah 31. And yes, the land, but it's seed time is coming. It's all come to fruition. Uh, now, he doesn't say it in the Hebrew Bible, but he's come early to get me ready. The person who's going to clear the way as Elijah, as Moshe, however you want to look at it. Uh, four righteous servants to come, only one description. And I'm the man that fits that description. God orchestrated my life for that purpose. Now, he came to Jeremiah in the womb, as it says, uh, and he became a priestly man, a real good man. My road was a lot different. He needed uh, somebody to fit the verses, a man of suffering, lots of injuries, afflicted by God, born disfigured, um, familiar with disease, crushed with disease, but given long life. And I fit that to a T. Yeah, I had colon cancer, which he takes credit for now. And um, they had to cut it out. The eight inch tumor had burst through my colon. And I was on my deathbed. There ain't question of that. Uh, but I got to a hospital and they, they got it out. I took chemo for it and it didn't return. But I went back in for extra tests and they told me bad news. And I said, well, that's no surprise. What? I said, it spread to your lungs. You have stage four lung cancer. It's untreatable. I said, what does that mean, untreatable? They said, look, you've got maybe a month to live. You know when that was? Crushed with disease. Yeah, it crushed me. I mean, I stopped working and you know, all. But uh, it's when the planes hit New York 22 years ago. And I haven't seen a doctor since that day. 53 fulfilled. That's what Isaiah 53 10. Yeah. It's a hell of a story. A hell of a thing I had to go through. Taking the mantle. Oh, and that's built it. Now, mind you, God just seized Ezekiel and put him in the fire refinery. Just seized him. With me, it says he chose to crush him with disease that he would offer himself for guilt, which is. Make the many righteous and remove their guilt and go through the fire of refinement. And uh, yeah, it's on plenty of videos, which you can find in the book of Job, Jonah, and Ezekiel. And now you find it's, it's a part of 53. And only I could tell you that. Well, because it's not in there and nobody knows it, even knows what it is. I call it God's boot camp for prophets. It's more like a boot camp, like you're a cadet and you're trying to become a Green Beret in the Marines or a Navy SEAL. It's brutal. But I tell you what, what they go through is nothing compared to what he's put me through. I mean, that's a, <laughs> that's a ride through the park or something. Okay, this is called the God of Elijah. Anyway, this is all God's words. He wrote the entirety of the Hebrew Bible. He had each prophet. They lit his spirit to lit upon them, and God was in his spirit, and he manipulated their minds such that they felt they were having conversations with him. Kind of like a vision in a way. And he told them, he told Isaiah, write this down. And he wrote Isaiah. Told Malachi 3, write this down. Jeremiah, write this down. Now, did Jeremiah know? There was going to, his covenant was, the covenant he was writing about was going to come back in some future time. See, a time is coming. The day of the Lord? No, he didn't know any of that. But he wrote it anyway. 
Because God told him to. He wrote the whole Hebrew Bible. Chapter 15. God of Elijah. Who's a Gentile. Well, I'll get to it. He's a Gentile. Taking the mantle which had dropped from Elijah. He, that's Elisha, struck the water and said, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? As he too struck the water, it parted to the right and to the left, and Elisha crossed over. That's 2 Kings, chapter 2, verse 14. Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? Elisha is the only person in the Hebrew Bible to refer to God as the God of Elijah, rather than the God of Israel, or the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, etc. Elijah is not an Israelite. He is a Tishbite, and an inhabitant he lives in, Ramoth Gilead of the Gentiles, Arabs and Assyrians, east of the River Jordan a territory like Moab, east of the River Jordan and north of Moab. He has no history, and there are no Tishbites in any of the ancestral trees of the Israelites that are chronicled in the Hebrew Bible. Not all tribes are chronicled, by the way. The many references to Elijah the Tishbite and Abner and Ramoth Gilead without any history of the Tishbites in the Hebrew Bible is unusual and calls attention to a tribal or clan affiliation from Gilead east of the River Jordan. The God of Elijah, the God of Israel, the God with me right now, is the God of a single Gentile, one Gentile. And that's true of today. Today, the God of Israel is also the God of Keith. One Gentile, no Christian, has the Spirit of God in them, which they believe by accepting Jesus as their Savior and believing in the resurrection. Mm -mm. And none go to heaven. None are sin free. Because Jesus, the whole story, is just a myth. And God wouldn't accept a human sacrifice anyway, much less commit one. He is a myth. You all see God's argument on it. It's in the book. It's the only thing not specifically backed up with Scripture. But the facts that he sets forth are so apparent and clear. He never existed. You know, no, there's not one word written of him until 40 years after his death when, when the Gospel of Mark was written. 40 years. And they got quotes, sermons, Sermon on the Mount. <laughs> All this story that never came out during his life. Or even shortly thereafter. And there's different versions of his life out there than the four Gospels alone. There's more writings and they're different stories because that's what it is. It was a time of stories. Nobody could read. They say he fed 5,000 people with two fish and five loaves or something like that. Well, did you know Muhammad did the same thing? You know why? Because storytellers knew what? They knew the people listening to him were hungry. Muhammad supposedly caused tidal waves in the sea that threw fish at everybody. <laughs> Story, feel. The only true religion is Judaism, period. Okay, I'll start over. There's just two paragraphs. The God of Elijah is the God of a single Gentile and all the Jewish people the God created all of humanity. The Gentile Elijah, who returns as a Gentile, that <laughs> would be me today anyway. Uh, again, God may have me convert when we get to Jerusalem. In the day of the Lord, God comes from Adam, symbolizing a song in Christianity in the town of Gentile lands. And of the Jewish people, none are with him. Jesus returns from Gentile land. God returns from shit. <laughs> he had me say that. He controls my words. God returns from Gentile lands with his representation, who is a Gentile, in the beginning. Adam no longer exists in the day of the Lord. 
and today would be within Jordan. God returns coming from a Christian country with a Gentile. The God of Elijah is the God of a single Gentile, though God created all humanity. In the day of the Lord, this day of the Lord, he is again the God of a single Gentile, his righteous servant, Mashiach. The God of the Jewish people and one Gentile. He does not commit or accept human sacrifice, Christians, and totally a singer. Huh. Chapter 16. John the Baptist was not Elijah as Jesus claimed. It's very good. It's also 17. Jesus' greatest lie. And it's a big one. And there's no denying it. 